Hi, I'm no one in particular, and I like to argue. A lot. There is nothing more entertaining and exciting than building a little log cabin out of facts and ideas before lobbing it haphazardly at someone in the vague hopes it might leave an impression. It's so satisfying to put together that effective gotcha that leaves someone to either concede a point or to opt out of the discussion even if it rarely actually changes someone's mind. I spent a semester in college as the token atheist in a group of young Earth creationists. I was dragged there by someone who wanted help to totally pwn them, but I stayed because I felt like there was something to be gained from debate, even if you couldn't convince someone of something. I felt that in a good debate, both parties come away with a better understanding of the other's viewpoint, but more importantly, a better understanding of their own. In defending my position, I learned something about myself and what I care about. We all parted amicably, almost as friends, because even though we hadn't fundamentally changed each other's minds, we treated each other with respect and dignity. It was fun. The internet is a place of frothful argumentation, and it feels like it should be home to someone like me. But, well... In 2014, when the dark corners of the internet bubbled over and otherwise rational-sounding people started spouting white supremacist dog whistles and gleefully trying to destroy people's lives, I just couldn't make my brain believe what was happening. I reacted to it the way I reacted to everything, by trying to argue and debate so that I could understand where these people were coming from. Every single time, whether I was making convincing points or not, whether I was being conciliatory or not, the discussion would end with an individual sullenly disappearing, followed shortly by a volley of anonymous threats and attempts to sabotage my life and the lives of my friends and family. The last argument I ever had was during the 2016 presidential election. I was arguing with a bunch of MAGA types, and in a desperate bid to find some common ground, I resorted to the one thing I assumed everyone would agree on. I asked, Can we at least agree that Nazis are bad? No. No, we couldn't agree on that. This is where we are right now. Where the internet is. We've reached a point where no discussion can exist. Either these people didn't understand history and didn't know that Nazis, given power, would kill me and millions of others for the crime of being born, or worse, they know exactly who they are and what they're saying. I spent a lot of time talking to people from image boards like 4chan because I wanted to understand what they see in a toxic place like that. One of the common points they would often bring up was this concept of the marketplace of ideas. A place where, due to anonymity, your ideas would be pitted against other ideas in some kind of arena of the mind. In the real world, they would say, someone would unfairly advantage their idea combatant through the power of who you are and what kinds of social power you wield. Someone with an MD would have a better time expressing an idea involving medicine than someone who isn't, even if that idea might not be a correct one. That this is a central pillar of their beliefs is demonstrated by their love of the concept of memes. The term, coined by biologist and notorious internet troll Richard Dawkins, applied genetic theory to the concept of ideas. A meme is a sort of idea life form, which lives inside our minds before we propagate it by using words to create a facsimile of that idea in whoever we're talking to. Of course, because language is imperfect, the idea we create in someone else will have subtle changes from the idea that lives in our heads, which allows for a sort of natural selection to take place. The memes that are effective at motivating us to share them, that are easy to share, and that motivate others to listen and internalize them have an advantage over those that don't, which causes the weaker ones to die out. After all, there's a limited time in our lives to spread and listen to ideas. In Chan boards, and to a lesser extent in all social media, people step outside of themselves to be swept along in the process of mimetic evolution. Ideas and images which are cool, funny, or interesting rise to the surface and are iterated on, creating art and humor and thought, and the end result filters out to the rest of the internet for everyone to benefit from. How does Polar Bear know what Apples is? This is, in the kindest possible light, why people from these image board communities hate identity politics as much as they do. By bringing in who you are and what you look like and anything else about your existence, you are unfairly advantaging your idea and interfering with the natural selection that would have otherwise taken place. If you have a big Twitter following, or you're particularly good looking, or you have a convincing sounding voice, by wielding those things you are admitting that your idea couldn't cut it in the death pit. And like, cool, I get it. On its surface, that sounds like an extremely worthwhile experiment to have. What happens if you let ideas duke it out without any people or faces attached? What happens? Fucking Nazis happen, that's what. That's what grew in that fucking Petri dish. 
white supremacy and other kinds of bigotry are all really good at spreading themselves. Discussions happen, debates happen, and at the end of the day, new Nazis get made. They gather up and make a convincing sounding argument and then use whatever violence they can plausibly get away with to silence and disempower anyone with a dissenting point of view. The meme of white supremacy includes the idea that violence and harm are justified in the interest of spreading itself and the idea that words are only as useful as the power they give you to accomplish your objectives. Because of this, any debate one might have with them plays directly into their hands. They shout that it's foolish of you to fear bodily harm from them while they DM you with what they'd do to you if they could. So where does that leave someone like me? How do you have a discussion once things have gone this far? How do you talk about anything when you know that there is this idea parasite out there spreading itself which contains the idea that people like me should be killed? When people in positions of critical power in our government are already working on making changes to our laws that would kill millions of people? How can anyone talk about video games or theology or I don't know, food when the value of your life and existence are in question? What kind of logic or rationality can you offer to someone who already wants you dead? What kind of thought experiment can you weave for someone with a gun against your head and who doesn't actually want or need anything that you can give them? I'd love to have debates. I really would. I would love to talk about fun things and thought experiments and share memes and just be here on YouTube having a fun time. Yet, I always end up here saying the same things over and over, because this overshadows everything else. There are Nazis, and they're getting more powerful, and as we've seen in world history and recently in the Chan boards, words and ideas alone aren't enough to stop them. Debate isn't enough to stop them. Brute force is the only thing that's ever done the trick, and even then only after incalculable harm was done. I'm just some random obnoxious trans girl who likes to argue. I have no place in a fight that can't be won with words and mild trolling, and I can't ignore that this is where we are right now. What's even left to say? I wish I could have found this place before it came to this. It would have been fun.